Welcome to Living Beyond Linear Radio Show, an exploration of what is beyond logical and explainable that actually empowers each of us to be creating, living, and loving our lives. What if the life that actually works for you makes no sense, is totally unpredictable, and goes way outside the box of conventionality? Would you let yourself have it? Would you like to be creating your life for more of what is truly possible? Join your host, Keisha Clark, for this week's adventure in Living Beyond Linear. (laughs) Oh my goodness, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in this great, big, amazing, incredible, delicious, magical world. Hello and welcome to Living Beyond Linear with myself, Keisha Clark. I am your host. I am your uh, your visitor for the next rough hour, roughly hour or so. And if you so desire, um, I might just be somebody who uh, throws a little bit of chaos into your world in a good way, of course. Because <laughs> what we do on Living Beyond Linear is I'm challenging you to stop asking your life to make sense. Yeah, there it is. That's pretty much it. And everything that that entails, we just like let ourselves have a good old time with that. So <laughs> I was gone last week. And thank you for all of you uh, and to all of you who have been sending me messages and cheering me on. I had a move last week. It was quite a bit of havoc going on and chaos, and uh, it's an amazing process. It's amazing to go through um, some of the intensities of our lives and come out on the other side and go, wow, <laughs> that was that was. That was amazing. So, yes, um, it was quite a few straight days of intensive labor, and um, I just uh, kind of checked in, and the show was like, you know, you can always put up a replay. So I did that last week. So thank you for all of you who played with the replay, and thank you to all of you who are playing with the replays in my archives. If you are new to visit me or the station here on Inspired Choices Network, please know that we have a ton of archives. We have like thousands, literally thousands, plural, thousands of archives uh, between the number of hosts we have on this network and have had on the network. And there are lots of very cool things that you can find. There's articles. There's replays of all the shows. Um, there's just really good stuff here for you to play with if you want to play with it. So, you know, if my show doesn't necessarily blow your hair back, totally fine. There's a whole lot of other people to play with on this station. And however you're doing it is totally how it needs to happen for you in the moment you're choosing it. And that's awesome. And thank you for playing. However you're playing, whenever you're playing, I greatly appreciate the contribution you are being to this show and this station and to consciousness <laughs> and how can we play even more even bigger even more funner what would make it fun for you to actually have the life you truly desire and what if you stopped asking it to make sense yeah i wonder if that would start to create a little more fun for you I wonder. So today, uh, we're kind of, uh, something started to show up for the month of June. So, um, we're going to start a series, a little series of, um, shows that are kind of inspired to me by and from certain stories and, and some of them have been made into shows. I think actually all of them have been made into shows. Um, the first one this week, we're starting off with Just Click Your Heels Together. And of course, you might know the inspiration for that saying comes from the story The Wizard of Oz, which is also a very well-known movie, long-standing tradition for a lot of us. Um, and <laughs> I'm just in a really good good mood today, guys. So um, I, I just am having so much fun. It's, it's like, wow, I'm, it's all new now that I'm back doing the show. I was off for a week, and now I'm back, and it's like, oh, wow, it's a video show. How cool is that? <laughs> so, so today we are playing with Just Click Your Heels Together. So what do you do when you lose yourself in the energy of someone, something, or somewhere else? It is actually pretty easy to get confused, is it not? <laughs> in a relationship, in a team, in a crowd, in any group of people, even if there's not a whole lot of people in bodies, it can still be pretty easy to be confused, to get confused, a little bit disoriented even. So how do we get ourselves back or forward to home? And I'm putting air quotes around that. How do we stay in the director's chair of our life and make our choices from what we truly know with a capital K and what we truly desire. 
And what if we could just click our heels together? So, my friends, have you ever tried that? Like, literally in person, like, with your body, clicking your heels together? (laughs) Um, There are lots of things that we can play with to uh, kind of get a sense of ourselves when we're having those moments um, that life seems pretty crazy and we, like, kind of forget who the heck are we and where the heck are we and what are we doing and what's going on. And um, it's interesting to me that, like, a lot of our life can actually be that. Um, A lot of people might actually spend more time in that confusion than in the knowing of who and what they truly are. I have certainly had my share of times that I have spent large amounts of times, long times, in the confusion and not in the awareness of me. And so that's part of what I wanted to play with today. When this little phrase popped itself into itself into my universe, I was like, oh, well, that's interesting. And there's kind of been a theme going on in my life here and in some of my shows uh, in the last several months um, with the whole, you know, starting last year, I began to get ready to move. And moving was a big deal for me. And then there was this thing about home and finding home and getting home and being home and creating home and having home. And I have had so many amazing experiences (laughs) in this process, um, not all of which I have shared just yet. And <clears throat> there's that that thing for many of us about um, where is home for us. And, of course, in the story, uh, The Wizard of Oz, um, that so many of us are likely familiar with, if you've not heard the story or seen the movie, um, highly recommended. It's just like it's one of the pastimes. You know, it's, it's sort of like a rite of passage for so many Um And the story itself, I am amazed. It's been around for decades, and I am amazed uh, at how many, oh, what is that word? (laughs) How many um, metaphors and analogies are in that that piece of work? Um, Everything from relationship to um, consciousness to you know cooking could be you can there's so many applications of the different themes in this show and uh and the central theme um that the power is in you all along and so for me there's a lot of that that applies to our life and living um and our kind of quest for for knowing ourselves for actually having more of ourselves and how so often it it feels more normal to feel lost and it feels actually foreign to actually have a sense of who we are. And so that's what I want to play with today, in the beyond linear style, of course, because um, we're not going to ask it to make sense. And And that's a huge piece for so many of us is we are looking, consciously or unconsciously, there's sort of this default um, thing that we kind of trip into so quickly and so often that we we are under this assumption, this illusion, this um, conclusion maybe, that we should make sense, that our life should make sense. And it just doesn't. I mean, if you look at the story in The Wizard of Oz, like, you know, how many days do you wake up and talk to a scarecrow, a lion? <laughs> and how many um, how, how many of you have ever, like, been picked up in a house and put into a different dimension, right? I mean, some of us have, and not probably that's the minority, or, or those of us who've done that, we're in a minority at the, on this planet anyway. Um, it's like, it's it's not about that the way we function is going to follow a logical or a linear form um, or formula. And so what do we do to find who we are, to find the energy of us, to find what some people could also call the energy signature of us, and start to really allow that to be where we can tap into and what we can tap into with greater ease rather than home or ourselves being the foreign place. So it's kind of like being a foreigner oftentimes in our own life. And how fun is that? I don't find that to be a great deal of fun for me. Um, you know, we we can glean a lot from that. Um, we can be the observer. We can um, notice things. We can 
uh, have great awarenesses about lots of things that go on in the world, and when and and how much are we really um, choosing to have that sense of who and what we are. And so, yes, we only have <laughs> the length of the time of the show today for this conversation. So I'm not having any expectation that we come to conclusions or that we figure something out. Of course, that's you know a part of the theme of my show and my life and my work is we're not going to figure it out. However, what I would like to play with today is where are the where are the invitations that we haven't been um, receiving and we haven't been choosing and we haven't been responding to that would allow us to, to start to play even more with how much more of us is now really desiring to show up and how much more of us we are willing to get to know and get acquainted with and become familiar with and become aware of to begin with. So, Wow, so what are all that you're made of? What is that energy? What are those energies, all of the energies that we are? I I get that it's more than we can really name. <laughs> it's not, do we really require that they be named? Do we really require that those energies be figured out or defined or, you know, listed somewhere? Um, for me, I don't, I don't have a requirement that I know all of the energies. It's more about letting myself be aware of all of the energies and letting myself be available to those energies as well as be being available to what those energies create in the world. And so the first thing let's talk about, let's play with, is what do you have in place, um, what do you play with, if anything, <laughs> that really is kind of a way that you are able to tap into the energy of you. Um, so many of us, we have not yet acknowledged that we are so aware of other people, of other energies, of things that are going on. And for the majority of people that I watch playing in the world, there's there's not yet been an acknowledgement uh, of how aware they are and of how much information their bodies are capable of interpreting, receiving and interpreting. And Lily's going to chime in today. For those of you who have never played with us before, Lily is my feline friend this incarnation, and I also refer to her as my co-pilot in consciousness. <laughs> she she chimes in and she moves the energy. Um, she makes her contribution in kitty cat form. So um, you might hear her <laughs> in the in the conversation as well. Um, so what what do you have in place for that, if anything? Have you even begun to acknowledge the the vastness of your awareness and how much you are actually aware of and how much you're capable of being aware of? A lot of people haven't. So if you've not done that yet, would you be willing to begin to play with that, with your awareness? And would you be willing to actually tap into what you know as well. And that's your knowing, as I say, with a capital K, <laughs> which we've talked about on some of the, the shows here this year so far. And uh, you can absolutely access those shows in the archives tab of my host page. Um, so hmm, it's really funny. When we, when we bring up conversations like this about like having more awareness of ourselves and knowing who we are truly, having a sense of us, it's fascinating to me uh, to perceive how much we put up as, as an obstacle to ourselves actually getting to know that and having, that, uh, having more ease and accessibility to that awareness. Um, it's really interesting if I were to put it into uh, a visual. It's kind of like we... we um, surround ourselves in these massive, um, gosh, I don't even know what to call them, uh, 
like a, a like if we were going to be walking around with this actually visible, we would all be walking around with these enormous globes kind of around us of of solidity, you know. Um, so it it could actually look pretty funny, kind of like you know you know those um, blow up outfits that people put on. I think I've seen videos of people putting them on and then they do these ridiculously funny things, like they try to sword fight or they try to wrestle, but they've got these big blow up suits on. <laughs> So they almost look like sumo wrestler size suits. And it's kind of like that times, you know, 10 to 15 to 20,000. <laughs> we, we're wearing these big suits of our um, kind of um, really what it comes down to is our unwillingness um, to acknowledge so much of us. And we've how many of us have bought into the idea that we are small and... Um, kind of minuscule and inferior uh, simply because we've shown up here on the planet with a body. And so have you bought into that? Have you bought the point of view that you're small and inferior and insignificant and that bodies are just this thing you have to put up with for the time that you're visiting? And so if you have, I wonder if that has been a part of creating something that makes your life maybe not as fun as it could be, not as enjoyable as it could be. And if you've bought into that and you are not having a really fun time, I wonder if maybe you could begin to um, shift the perspective of inferiority and insignificance and smallness and allow your awareness to start to bubble. And what if, what if there is nothing about us ever that is in any way small or inferior? What if you, no matter how hard you try, you, you could not be insignificant to the universe? <laughs> right? What if the energy of you is actually a really required component, a really required element to all of the the things that function in this universe, to to this universe actually functioning in a way that um, can be expansive, can be generative? What if you are an energy that is required for that to happen? Yeah. So finding you, getting familiar with you, getting acquainted with you, ah, what if you don't have to do that? Like, you're not obligated to it. Um, And I see a lot of people kind of function from, well, I ha- I'm supposed to know me. I'm supposed to know what I'm supposed to do. Well, do you hear conclusions in that? <laughs> do you hear how that could become a little bit of a trippy trap for ourselves? I, I kind of like that, a trippy trap. <laughs> um, which, you know, we're masters at creating traps for ourselves. We're masters at creating obstacles for ourselves. So Part of what I would love to play with is what if we could begin to discover our ability to master who we are and how we function and how we can be more of that. Yeah. <laughs> and if you haven't already joined us in the chat room, I'm inviting you to come join us in the chat room. Um, it's just a kind of a a fun backstage way to play with us. And, um, you know, if you're listening during work hours and you don't want to be too obvious about it, (laughs) you can just sign into the chat room and you don't have to have that tab open when everybody's walking by. But it gives you a way to submit your questions, your comments, thoughts, awarenesses, ah ahas, ideas. Um, if If you don't want to call in live and bring your question live on the air, the chat room is just a fun place to come play with us. There's always something fun going on. It's always a contribution to the show, and we have a good time in the chat room. So come and play with us there if you've never done that, if you have a chance to do it. We would love to see you there. I would love to see you there. And, uh, of course, you can always call in live. And the numbers to call in are posted on pretty much every screen on Inspired Choices Network. So you can play with us in lots of different ways. And, of course, for all of you who are listening on an app of some form, whether that's TuneIn or Skepper or, I mean, Stitcher, sorry. <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still catching up on technology and all of the names of all of the millions of things we can play with. <laughs> and it's just amazing to me. Um, 
You can listen on iTunes. You can download our podcast on iTunes if you want and take them with you. Um, you can always uh, check into the site as well. And as I said earlier in the show, <laughs> yes, yes, Christine. <laughs> Um, you can always access any of our replays on demand 24-7 anywhere on the Inspired Choices Network. So we're going to take our first break, and I'm going to take a breath and just invite you to take a breath and start to play with um, more with the question of um, could I be willing, would I be willing, am I willing to have more awareness of me, to have more of my knowing of who I am and all that I am. And are you willing to have your awareness of the I am of who you are? Hmm, there's a little brain twister. So (laughs) you're listening to Living Beyond Linear here with myself, Keisha Clark, and we are on the Inspired Choices Network having a fabulous time, getting inspired and all kinds of good stuff. And we'll be back right after this break. What would it be like to function from the entirety of your existence? What if you included all of you in the creation of your life, the strange, the wonderful, and everything in between, with no expectation that it makes any sense? Keisha Clark invites you to Living Beyond Linear Radio Show, an exploration of what is beyond logical and explainable that actually empowers each of us to be creating, living, and loving our lives. Join in the adventures every Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, 10 a.m. Central, 9 a.m. Mountain, and 8 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You are listening to Living Beyond Linear Radio Show with Keisha Clark. Would you like to bring your question on the show today? Call us in the U.S. 815-880-8255. In Canada at 613 813- 800-8736 or Skype us at Inspired Choices Network. You can also email your questions to Keisha at livingbeyondlinear.com. Now back to our show. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um so yes, I'm I'm a little bit especially oh well welcome back and forward and sideways and wherever you are. <laughs> Living Beyond Linear here on Inspired Choices Network with me, Keisha Clark. Um, I'm laughing because I'm I, to, this weekend we have the Live Your Magic event here in Dallas, and I'm all excited for that. We start the the party tonight, and um, you've heard me talk about that on a few of my shows as we've been leading up to it. And of course, I got to um, interview Megan Silito, who is the uh, facilitator and creator of that event, and um, we just it's like i can perceive like the energy of dallas is like just bubbling and um i just want a shout out to all of the peeps who are coming to show up here in dallas those who are here local who are coming to play and there are people actually driving in for this event and oh my goodness we were looking at the energy of like what is what is this area asking for and it has been really cool to play with the questions and the possibilities of all of this um just to to be willing to step in and step up in our own lives being and choosing more of who we are um each of us individually as well as all of us collectively uh for this class and and really bring that to the party and be here in the energy of this area and um and see what that cracks open and and um begins to create here in the in the region as well as in our lives and in the world um and that's a part of the the possibilities that we can be willing to play with that we can become willing to play with um when we're talking about the energy of us um a part of being willing to play with it is acknowledging that the energy you are and and the energies that you bring um, they are unique to you and as I said earlier in the show what if what if they are required? What if there are people in this world and places in this world and creatures in this world um 
that are requiring and desiring the energy that you have, the energy that you are. And so part of this, within this topic, in this conversation, um, for as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> for me, within this particular kind of conversation, is also the acknowledgement of, it, it's not just about knowing who you are just so that you can talk about yourself or so that you can figure something out and and now you know it and you can tick off that box. It's really knowing who we are is a discovery process. It is ongoing. And the energy of us changes and fluctuates and transforms as we go through any given moment or any given um, um on this planet, we we'll, we call it time, you know, because we have time to measure things here. Um, but the energy is constantly changing. And it's also constantly creating something. So in case you've never heard me talk about the way I talk about energy, is the, the organic nature, the organic behavior of energy is that it responds. So when energy meets another energy, it responds to it. Um, and we see this in the relationship of the elements. We see this in pretty much everything we might look at, whether that's um, putting a building together or people meeting each other in the social setting or um, the elements in nature. Energy responds. And so knowing ourselves, for me, uh, is not really about being able to figure something out so that we can just know it in our cognitive mind. It's about that continuous participation. Um, the curiosity opens different energies, activates different energies, and opens different doors and possibilities for us to explore and discover. And when we're doing that, we're actually being a contribution and we're actually being a part of the energy that is what creates something new and in in many cases something greater. So how do we start that process? How do we um what tools can we play with? And I want to give you just a, there's just a few that I play with that um cuz I've kind of found the ones that are sort of the go-to's for me. Because it's easy when you're out and about it's easy to have your um, awareness kind of get, it, it kind of gets skewed <laughs> or blurry <laughs> or fuzzy. Um, and again, that's just part of our being aware. So something you could begin to play with is try this both when you are by yourself in your house, in a room somewhere, it doesn't matter where, um, as well as when you are with a group of people just out in public. It doesn't have to be people you know. It doesn't have to be people you don't know. Um, just start to play with this question. This is one that I find that is it's very simple, and it's really to the point. And it's it's you asking the universe to show you the energy of you. So it's simply, universe, show me the energy of me. Universe, show me the energy of me. Now, this is a question that I have come to use. Um, for those of you who don't know, I do a lot of work in intuitive mediumship and with readings, um, it can be very uh, challenging sometimes because a lot of beings show up to to share a message or, you know, to share something. <laughs> and so it can be very quick and very intense that, you know, my awareness of all of these other beings um, can get fuzzy, can get kind of blurry. And especially when so many of the beings are asking me you know they're they're wanting to contribute something to that conversation or to that person. So oftentimes I will ask everybody to kind of step back. I will ask everybody to just give me a moment and we're going to do this in a way that at the human aspect I can convey information you know given that I'm in a body and the person who's who I'm working with is usually in a body. Um and then what I do oftentimes is this is a place that I use these questions. Universe show me the energy of me. Universe, show me the energy of me right now. And it's a very, it can become a very quick way for you to get that sense of you and tap back into, okay, here I am. Here's home for me. Here's my home base. Um, but I don't say home base often. I, I, 
I would like to not imply that it's something solid because it's really not solid. It's not like you're coming back to the same place each time other than the fact that you're, come, you're, you're tapping into you each time. So when you're asking that question, you're asking you to become more aware of your energy. But your energy is different, and that's why I use the question, universe, show me the energy of me, rather than having some, some kind of thing attached to that question that would require me to look for something familiar that I could recognize before. And this is where it gets a little trippy. And so here's some of that beyond linear stuff I talk about. is <laughs> because the energy of you is constantly changing. And yet, the essence of who you are is always present. So when you're asking, universe, show me the energy of me, you are asking for you to have more of your awareness of you that includes everything that you are in that moment, everything you have become, and everything that is possible for you to still become aware of and be. Okay, so part of what I like to play with is how we can do this and not limit ourselves and not box ourselves up. So when you're looking for home base, it can be something that you actually have uh, a conclusion, unconsciously even, (laughs) uh, in place that you're looking for something about how you were five minutes ago or five hours ago or five days ago or five decades ago. And what if you aren't just that anymore what if you are actually more like that's just one little set of molecules of you right so when you're asking the question universe show me the energy of me you're actually including everything of you in the possibility of what you can become aware of and that's what i'm inviting you to play with even more okay some people require a physical tool as well or a physical aid. And so you can actually just, you know, you can put two of your fingers together. You can click your heels together. (laughs) You can have a physical cue, a physical something for your body that assists you in calling in that energy. Okay? So if it works really well for you to have some kind of a physical um, tool, you can actually just, you know, some people take their thumb and their middle finger or their thumb and their forefinger and they just kind of tap it. Um, it's, it doesn't have to be anything special. You don't have to make a huge ritual out of it. It's just a little something that you can do that's for you that in those moments it just adds to the energy of the question for you. So if you're asking, universe, show me the energy of me, and you're tapping your thumb and your middle finger, just the tips of those two fingers, you you can actually bring that into your body as well. And it's not about anchoring. I'm not going to say the word anchoring. I'm just I'm just inviting you to play with ways to allow that energy of that question to be present for all of you. Okay? It's not something you want to tie yourself to. It's just a way for you to bring the energy into your body and allow your body to participate. And the second question that I, is one of my favorites, is body, show me the energy of you right now. Because oftentimes when I'm in, uh, kind of in the intensity of the work, uh, or even in the intensity of, you know, if I'm having an intense conversation and and I'm noticing that I'm about to go into some kind of reaction and I might not be about to say something that I would really like to say in a way I'd really like to say it. (laughs) <laughs> I will just in my in my universe I will say to for myself I will I don't necessarily say it out loud in front of other people because it sort of gets you that tilted puppy dog head. Um, the universe show me the energy of me right now. Body show me the energy of you right now. And if you have those little physical um aids <laughs> um I know there's another word and I can't think of it at the moment. Um if you have those physical cues, you can actually just use that because it's a way that you can have the energy of the question and you don't have to say it out loud. Okay, so whichever way works for you, use that. And you can use them both together or you can use them individually. Okay, universe, show me the energy of me right now. Body, show me the energy of you right now. And I will tell you that a number of times that has gotten me out of a sticky moment and into a place of my awareness, which when we're in the space of our awareness, 
we actually have more of our choices available to us. And that's what, a, that's what creating our life is really about, um, in my interesting point of view, <laughs> as well as in my experience, is the creation of our life is our choice. And we spend so many of our moments being out of choice because we're in the throes of something that is basically not us. And we're, we can be doing this without even realizing it, without even having our awareness of it. And that's just, in, in many ways, we learn to do that. We learn to be in the distraction rather than in our awareness, okay? Ah, and everything that's bringing up, if you would just take a breath. Because <laughs> there is no wrong way to do this, friends. There is no wrong way to be who you are. There is no wrong way to ask a question. There is no wrong way to have your awareness. It's all simply how you're choosing to do it and how you're able to, to see it and receive it and choose it and be it at whatever moment you're doing that. And in the next moment, you have another choice. You have another chance. You have another experience. You have another question. You have another something, okay? And um, this just click your heels together is, is about remembering, oh, you do have a choice. You do have a choice. And in the story, The Wizard of Oz, Glenda, the good witch, is, is the one who speaks into our awareness that reminder, it was with you all along. The power was in you all along. And Dorothy has been on this incredible, trippy journey, okay, with some really cool moments and some really scary moments. And how many of us it, could we just, that could be our life, right? We have really cool moments and we have really scary moments. And what if in all of those moments we could be more willing to ask for our awareness of ourselves so that we can be present with ourselves as ourselves and make the choices for us? And what if that is a contribution? What if that is actually a way of creating so much greater than, than anything we could try to figure out and then attempt to create in the world. So how many ways have you tried to figure you out to, before you're willing to create you in the world? Wow. That's pretty huge. <laughs> and I, of course, have never done that. <laughs> oh, except for just about most of my life, right? How many ways have you tried to figure yourself out before you would be willing to create yourself in the world? Wow. <laughs> okay, so on that question, I'm just going to let us take a breath. <laughs> and I, I truly invite you to be willing to get to the space of letting it make you laugh. Yeah, because again, there's no wrong answer, right? It's not a test, okay? What if, what if you don't have, if this is not about pass or fail. It's just about create. Right? It's not about pass or fail. It's not about you get it right and then you get a prize. What if it's just about what do you want to create? And would you be willing to explore the energy of you? Would you be willing to know you? What if that is the contribution, friends? Knowing you. Before you go out and save anything or anyone else before you go out and do amazing things, what if knowing you, what if having the sense of all that you are is a contribution? Yeah. <laughs> we are just so amazingly cute sometimes. <laughs> Oh, my friends, my friends. Okay, so I invite you over the break to just keep breathing. And whatever is coming up for you, I am asking you if you will ask the universe, show me the energy of me, show you the energy of you. And ask your body, show me the energy of you. And start to just notice what you become aware of. Are you willing to have even just 
2% more of your awareness right now. What could that create for you? What could that open up for you? What could that activate for you? Whew. Yeah, I'm talking to a whole bunch of potent people right now, and you are one of them, my dear. <laughs> so hang in there with us and keep breathing, and I wonder what else could become possible now. And you are listening to Living Beyond Linear here on Inspired Choices Network, and I'm Keisha Clark, and I will see you on the other side of this break. <laughs> What would it be like to function from the entirety of your existence? What if you included all of you in the creation of your life, the strange, the wonderful, and everything in between, with no expectation that it makes any sense? Keisha Clark invites you to Living Beyond Linear Radio Show, an exploration of what is beyond logical and explainable that actually empowers each of us to be creating, living, and loving our lives. Join in the adventures every Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, 10 a.m. Central, 9 a.m. Mountain, and 8 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You are listening to Living Beyond Linear Radio Show with Keisha Clark. Would you like to bring your question on the show today? Call us in the U.S. 815-880-8255. In Canada at 613 613- 800-8736 or Skype us at Inspired Choices Network. You can also email your questions to Keisha at livingbeyondlinear.com. Now back to our show. <laughs> How you doing, friends? <laughs> oh, my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. Wow. I think we just tapped a few, um, just a few. <laughs> things going on here for us holy moly ah and what if this could be fun for us what if this could be the a part of the the joy of the adventure and so here's another thing that i notice we do is we we say we're willing to know ourselves and so we start off on that you know that path so to speak and we we have all of this stuff come up um, that usually comes from the fact that we've concluded who we're already supposed to be, right? But I should be further than this. But I should be different than this. But I'm supposed to know blah, 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 okay? So all the shoulds and the supposed tos that you have, like, attached to your life <laughs> and attached to who and what you're supposed to be. <laughs> See, there's a supposed to. Um would you be willing to choose beyond all of that as you're playing with this discovery adventure? Yeah. If you had if you were not required to know anything about you, what else could you begin to know about yourself? What else could you begin to discover about you, who you are, what you are, all that you are? Okay? One of my favorite questions um, thank you, Shannon O'Hara, who was the first person I heard this from, is in this way that she said it, was what if nothing outside of you is greater than you are? And I love to play with that in first person tense. What if nothing outside of me is greater than I am? Would you be willing to ask yourself that question? And say and ask it in first person. What if nothing outside of me is greater than I am? And what do you become aware of? Yeah. Like there's all the stories and all of the points of view, all of the philosophies and the belief structure stuff that, well, of course, everything is greater than me. And yet, if you were to tap into your knowing with a capital K, what could you know? What could become, what could you become aware of? What if nothing outside of you is or can ever be greater than you are. So finding you, tapping into you, having your awareness of you, would you be willing to let that empower you? Would you be willing to have you as the unstoppable limitless 
source of creation. Yeah. And in those moments that you're lost, in those moments you're confused, in those moments that you don't have a sense of who you are, what if rather than looking to the things that you've tried to define yourself by or the things that someone else has tried to define you as, what if what you chose to tap into was the essence of what is true for you? Yeah. And this is about getting beyond and choosing beyond what makes sense. It's about choosing into what you could call the magic of you, what you could call the the power of you, the potency of you. It's the things that the human eye cannot see. But you can know it with a capital K. You can know it with your beyond cognitive knowing. You can be aware of it with your awareness. You can allow your body to gift you information and help you to also interpret or translate information and have more awareness. What if it's really about creating? What if it's not about fulfilling um, any kind of list of quotas? What if it is just about creating? Do you have any idea what you would like to create in this life? (laughs) And would you be willing to play with that question? Would you be willing to play with what would I like to create? And that it's the it's the being you, it's the, the, the allowing you to be more, to show up more. That's part of what activates the the more of this world, of us and of this world. I was um I was at the Dallas Psychic Fair <laughs> um gosh, this past weekend, wow. Um it's the first Sunday of each month and um this was my second fair and I'm having a total blast and oh my gosh, uh the people who come to my table just amaze me. You know, they're seeking and so many of them um, they're in that that space of where this transition is taking place. It's it's the moving from what you've bought from everybody else and what you've just adopted and adapted from the things you see and the things you might hear and you know, it's it's basically the letting go of everyone else's point of view about what life is supposed to be and beginning to be in that question of but who am I? Where am I? What do I really want to be and do and choose and create? And can you really be creating that for you from the space of not letting yourself know who you are? Is that even possible? So that's what I invite you to be playing with this week. Amazing potent and powerful friends of mine. (laughs) Would you be willing to begin to play with universe, show me the energy of me? Are you even willing to actually know how powerful and potent you are? And look at the story of the Wizard of Oz and all of the stories out there that remind us we have the power. We are the power and the potency. Yeah. We, each of us, have the authority to choose and create our lives. And what would it take to really have our own awareness of that for ourselves? And you can always click your heels together to remember that and to transport you 
from one point of view to a new one. So from all the points of view that are no longer working for you, would you be willing to click your heels? Universe, show me the energy of me. For all of the beliefs that you have bought into that do not allow you to create from the fullness and the uniqueness and the potency and the power of you, would you be willing to click your heels? Universe, show me the energy of me. For all of the insanity that you've created in the past, in all of the moments, in all of the lifetimes that you were functioning from those points of view that did not work for you, would you be willing to click your heels together? Universe, show me the energy of me now. And for all of the bodies that you have still been connected to through all of those points of view that kept you at someone else's disposal, that kept you under the influence and at the effect of someone else's belief or conclusion or projection or expectation or insanity (laughs) of any kind, all of those moments that you let yourself be in the distraction of that and all of those bodies, would you be able and be willing to click your heels together? Universe, show me the energy of me. Body, show me the energy of you. And what is truly possible here? Yeah. What if it does not have to be difficult? And what if it never has to make sense? (laughs) Oh, my goodness, my friends. Just click your heels together. Just tap the tips of your fingers. Just blink your eyes. Whatever it is that allows you to have your awareness of you. Be there. Be in those moments. Be in the willingness to have that and choose that and keep choosing that. And be in the curiosity of what could become available for you and possible for you as you are willing to choose this more. And then choose it. Would you choose it? Would you just choose it? And let yourself create. Let yourself have this. Let yourself play with your power and your potency. And I say this in so much excitement as I'm about to begin a weekend of class all about living your magic. Would you be willing to tap this? Would you be willing to tap the magic of you? And if you don't want to call it magic, call it whatever you like. But would you be willing to access that, have that, choose that, and play with that and create your life? Because what if that is what is really required, my friends? What if that is really and truly what will change everything? Yeah. And if you want to play more (laughs) with finding you, being you, choosing you, having you, and creating the life that really works for you, if you're ready to let go of what doesn't work, then come play with me. Play with me in person. Play with me online. You can find me on Facebook at Living Beyond Linear, and you can also play with me here every week uh, for the the radio show. You can also email questions, Keisha at livingbeyondlinear.com. And and there's going to be some events around town. You can come find me here if you're local in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Um, or in some places in Texas, I might travel a little bit, (laughs) short distances. So wherever you are, would you be willing to click your heels? Would you be willing to ask the questions? And would you be willing to receive more of your awareness of you? And join us next week because we're going to be talking about what do you do with a push-me-pull-you? <laughs> For those of you who might be aware or have played with the stories of Dr. Doolittle, we're going to be doing that next week. So click your heels, my friends. The power Thank is you in you. Thank you for listening in today and I'll see you to next Living week. Beyond Linear Radio Show with Keisha Clark. Connect with Keisha on Facebook at Living Beyond Linear for more offerings and events to play with. 
And you always have a standing invitation to join Keisha each week, Fridays at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, 10 a.m. Central, 9 a.m. Mountain, and 8 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com for more adventures in living.